Do not attempt to adjust your screen. I'll do it for you. There, that's better. What causes a blurry image and what can we do to fix them? We'll find out how optics can help us see better and do more in this segment on spherical lenses. Lenses are everywhere in anything that has eyes. In microscopes and cameras, telescopes, magnifying glasses, as well as car headlights. A lens is any transparent material with a curved surface, even a droplet of water. There is one particularly amazing kind of lens that can do some things better than any other kind of lens. Any idea? No? It's the lens in your eye, which is capable of changing focus from the micro to the macro, literally in the time it takes to blink. That's an incredible miracle of evolution. No other lens has the flexibility and response time. Your eyes can do this because they have flexible lenses controlled by muscles. They can bulge in and out, changing shape in an instant to focus on what you're looking at. Let's see what else lenses do and how they affect light rays and consequently what we see. Here's what happens when a light hits a lens. Rays from a common point source like a light bulb refract and they are bent, which changes their direction. They may be bent so that they converge like this or diverge like this where they are refracted outward away from each other or in many different directions. Whether they converge or diverge depends on the shape of the lens. As we discussed in another segment, there are two main kinds of lens shapes. The first one we'll look at or through is a convex lens, which means it curves outward. Convex lenses are converging lenses. This means the light rays come together at a point. As they emerge from the lens, they converge. Convex lenses are used in things like telescopes to bring distant light rays to a focus in your eyes. The second type is the concave lens. That's a lens which curves inward, and we are particularly interested in biconcave lenses that are curved inwards on both sides. Look at the shape of the lens and imagine rays of light hitting it. What do you think happens to them? They diverge or spread out. We'll talk about how the curved surfaces affect the images we see in a minute. But before we do that, let me explain a few important terms, which will help us understand how the optics of spherical lenses work. First, let's talk about the center of curvature. Think of a spherical lens as a part of a sphere. It's like a section that has been cut out. The center of curvature is the point in the center of the imaginary sphere from which the lens is cut whether it's a convex or concave lens. Now let's talk about the principal axis. The principal axis is the horizontal line that connects the center of the spherical lens with the center of the imaginary sphere. The next term, focal point, is simply the point where converging and diverging lenses focus light. The better the lens, the more light rays converge at the same focal point, and the clearer the image. There is a formula for the focal point. It's equal to half the distance from the center of the lens at the principal axis to the center of curvature. When light rays hit a refracting surface, they can create one of two kinds of images, depending on the curve of the lens and the location of the object. Convex lenses, for instance, can form a kind of image called a real image, which appears when light rays converge in real space. You also know it's a real image because it can be projected onto a surface. One example of a real image is what you see on a movie screen. You can make a few different sizes of real images with convex lenses, which is what we're gonna do in a moment. The size of the image we'll see depends on the distance between the object and the lens. But first, let's look at a diagram of one of these real images so you can see what's happening. Let's analyze one formed by an object beyond the center of curvature. You can predict the position of the image by creating a ray diagram of just three representative rays. We'll use a biconvex lens, which curves out on both sides. See the O on the principal axis in the center of the lens? That's the optical center of the lens. Let's draw a light ray that is parallel to the principal axis. When it strikes the lens, it will refract and go through the focal point, which is on the side of the lens opposite the object. Now let's draw a second ray. 
It goes right through the optical center, so it does not get refracted or bent. It continues in a straight line. Finally, we'll draw a third ray that goes from the object through the focal point on the same side of the lens as the object and strikes the lens. After it hits the lens, it will refract horizontally to the principal axis. The point at which the red lines cross is where the image will be in focus. Since it's a real image, it will be inverted below the principal axis. Want to see that in real life? I have a convex lens and a blackboard. Plus, I have this LED light that we'll use as our object. The light has two green bulbs and a single blue bulb on top. I have the light here and I hold up the board. Now when I hold up the lens, we see the color image of the light. And since our lens is one dimensional, so is the image. The image is real since we can project it onto a surface. Notice that the blue light is now below the green lights, that the image is upside down, inverted, and smaller than the actual object. I'm going to move the lens closer to the light and let's see what happens to the image. It got bigger, see? It's the same size as the actual object, but still inverted. That's because the image has moved further away from the lens so that the light is converging a longer distance from the principal axis. Now I'm going to move the lens even closer to the light between the center of curvature and the focal point. Now look at the image. Magnified, right? Why do you think that is? It's because the refracted rays converge at a place even further below the principal axis. Now what if the light is at the focal point of the lens? What kind of image would we get? Hmm, that's kind of a trick question because the answer is none. That's because the refracted rays travel parallel to one another and never converge with one another. Next, let's move our lens so that the light is inside the focal length. A virtual image is one where light only appears to converge on the surface of the lens. It's actually converging in front of the lens. Virtual images, unlike real images, cannot be projected onto a surface. You can see how virtual images are formed in this ray diagram. Virtual images are right side up and magnified. This is how magnifying glasses work. They are basically convex lenses, so it creates a magnified virtual image that allows you to see objects in greater detail. Virtual images are also formed by another kind of spherical lens, concave lenses. In fact, all images produced by concave lenses are virtual. The image is smaller in the lens than the real object. Now watch as the object moves closer to the lens. The image gets bigger, but not ever as large as the object. This image is always smaller than the object because the refracted rays converge at a point in the lens closer to the principal axis. Lenses are incredibly useful and adaptable. They can help us see farther or better or bigger or smaller. Here's one of the most powerful telephoto lenses made. Look at what it can do, keeping the image in focus from amazing distances. Lenses have become a part of our daily lives, as well as indispensable in science and industry. Optics open up a whole world of fascinating careers, so take a good look. And if you want to know more about the mathematics of lenses, check out the closer look. It will show you how to use the lens maker's equation, which calculates the focal length of a lens or distance to an object or image. It also covers the equations for finding the magnification of a lens. That's it for this segment of Physics in Motion. We'll see you next time. For more practice problems, lab activities, and note-taking guides, check out the Physics in Motion Toolkit.